Australia's secret empire. Five industries we dominate globally, nobody sees. Australia has 26 million people, smaller than Texas, but they secretly control five industries worth over $500 billion that run the modern world. I'm talking industries that power your phone, heat your home, build entire cities, and might determine who wins the next superpower race. And somehow, we're all focused on kangaroos and the Sydney Opera House, while Australia quietly dominates sectors most people have never even heard about. So today, we're exposing the empire hiding in plain sight. These aren't just fun facts. This is geopolitical power, controversial extraction, and the kind of global leverage that makes other countries nervous. Let's get into it. But wait, before we begin, please subscribe to ensure that you never miss out on any of my essential stuff. Comment, I subscribe below, and I will personally welcome you to our community. With that said, let's get started. At number five, we're starting with lithium. Now, you probably heard about lithium because it's in every electric vehicle, every smartphone, every laptop you own. But here's what you probably don't know. Australia produces 52% of the world's lithium. More than half. They're not just a major player. They are the game. That Tesla you see on the road? Australian lithium. That iPhone in your pocket right now? There's a very strong chance the lithium inside came from mines in Western Australia. We talk about going green and switching to electric everything, but nobody mentions that Australia is literally the gatekeeper to that entire transition. Now here's where it gets controversial. Lithium mining is water intensive. It scars the landscape. And in Australia, a lot of these mines are on or near indigenous land. So there's this tension. Progressive countries want clean energy, but the process of getting there? Not exactly clean. And the communities most affected often don't see the billions in profits. Tourists fly into Perth, maybe visit some beaches, completely unaware that a few hours inland, there are lithium mines worth tens of billions of dollars reshaping the global energy economy. But lithium? That's just a warm-up. Industry number four is something you've probably worn or slept on without realizing where it came from. Okay, this one sounds innocent. Wool. But stay with me because Australia doesn't just produce wool. They produce 25% of the entire world supply and over 80% of premium merino wool. If you ever bought a high-end sweater, suit, or outdoor gear, there's a massive chance it came from Australian sheep. Brands like Patagonia, Icebreaker, Lululemon, they all source merino wool from Australia because it's the gold standard. Soft, breathable, Temperature regulating. We're talking about a multi-billion dollar industry that most people associate with, like grandma's knitting projects. But this is global fashion, outdoor sports, luxury markets. Now, here's the uncomfortable part. There's a practice in the Australian wool industry called mulesing, basically removing skin from sheep to prevent infection. It's considered cruel by animal welfare groups, and it sparked international backlash. Some brands have banned Australian wool because of it, while the industry argues it's necessary in Australia's harsh climate. So you've got this weird contrast. Tourists are in Sydney petting kangaroos at zoos, taking Instagram photos, while the real money is out in rural Australia, with 70 million sheep producing fabric for the world's elite. The outback isn't just red dirt and adventure tours. It's an agricultural powerhouse. Wool is impressive. Don't get me wrong. But industry number three, this is what actually makes other countries sweat. At number three, iron ore. This is a big one in terms of raw export value, over $120 billion a year. Australia controls 37% of the world's iron ore exports, and almost all of it goes to one place, China. Think about that for a second. Every skyscraper going up in Shanghai, every bridge, every steel beam in Chinese infrastructure, it's coming from Australian mines. China's entire construction and manufacturing boom is built on Australian iron ore. And here's the kicker. China can't easily replace it. Brazil is the only other major supplier, and their logistics are way more complicated. This isn't just economics. This is geopolitical leverage. When Australia and China get into political tensions, which happens a lot, this is a card Australia quietly holds. You need our iron ore, and you know it. From a travel perspective, this is invisible. You visit Melbourne, 
you see coffee culture and street art. But a few hours north in the Pilbara region, it's one of the most resource-rich and strategically important places on Earth. Massive trains, autonomous trucks, mines operating 24-7. It's like a different planet, and tourists never see it. China needs Australian iron ore to keep building. But wait until you see industry number two, because you actually need this one even more than China needs steel. Number two is LNG, liquefied natural gas. Australia is the world's largest exporter, supplying 21% of global LNG. That might sound boring until you realize this. Entire countries run on Australian gas. Japan, South Korea, Taiwan. They don't have huge domestic energy sources, so they import LNG to generate electricity. If you've ever traveled to Tokyo, turn on the lights in your hotel room, charge your phone, take in a train. Australian LNG probably powered part of that experience. Now here's the controversy. Australia markets itself as a climate-conscious, progressive country, right? Clean beaches, protect the reef, save the koalas. But at the same time, they're exporting fossil fuels at a massive scale. It's this weird contradiction, profiting from gas exports while talking about renewable energy at home. And there's a darker layer, energy security. If conflict breaks out in the Asia-Pacific region, countries that depend on Australian LNG are vulnerable. Australia holds incredible power in that scenario, but it also makes them a target. Tourists visit the Great Barrier Reef. They worry about coral bleaching and climate change. But offshore, sometimes within inside those reefs, there are LNG facilities worth billions. It's this strange, invisible infrastructure powering half of Asia that nobody talks about. LNG keeps entire nations running. But nothing, nothing compares to industry number one. This one legitimately shocked me when I dug into the numbers. Here we go. Number one, rare earth elements and critical minerals. If you've never heard of these, buckle up, because this is the future. Rare earth elements are a group of 17 minerals with weird names like neodymium, dysprosium, and yttrium. You don't need to remember those, but you do need to know this. They're in everything. Wind turbines, electric vehicles, smartphones, military jets, MRI machines, fiber optic cables. None of these work without rare earths. Right now, China controls about 70% of global rare earth processing. But Australia? They have massive reserves of these minerals, plus cobalt, nickel, and other critical elements. And they're racing to build the infrastructure to process them domestically, which would break China's near monopoly. This isn't just about money. Whoever controls rare earth elements controls the future. AI development needs rare earths. Defense systems, rare earths. Renewable energy, rare earths. Space technology, you guessed it. Australia is positioning itself to be the critical mineral superpower by 2030. And most people have no idea. The U.S., Europe, Japan, they're all scrambling to secure supply deals with Australia because they know what's coming. This is Cold War-level strategic importance. And here's the wildest part. Tourists visit Uluru. They do the coastal road trips. They see wildlife. Meanwhile, they're literally standing on top of the minerals that would define the next 50 years of global technology and power. From a travel perspective, it's invisible. But from a geopolitical perspective, Australia just went from that chill country with beaches to critical player in the next era of global competition. So let's zoom out for a second. We think of Australia as this laid-back, nature-focused country. And sure, that's part of the story. But underneath, it's an export powerhouse controlling resources that make modern life possible. Lithium for your devices. Wool for your clothes. Iron are for Asia cities. Gas for the region's electricity and rare earth elements for literally everything in the future. Most countries can't do what Australia does because they don't have the land, the geology, the political stability, or the infrastructure. Australia is all for, and they know it. The question is, what happens when the world realizes how dependent they are on this one country? What happens if climate policy clashes with export revenue? What happens if geopolitical tensions turn Australia into a target or kingmaker? These aren't just travel facts. This is a hidden empire most people never see. So, real talk. Is Australia actually a hidden superpower playing a long game? 
Or am I overhyping a country we only know for beaches and wildlife? Drop a number one through five for which industry shocked you most. I'm betting most of you didn't even know about number one. And Aussies, did you already know this or did your own country surprise you? Because honestly, I think most Australians don't even realize the global power they're sitting on. Let's talk about it in the comments. I'm reading everything.